Hey y'all, so welcome back to my channel, and it is summertime, which means we need to get to cooking on something barbecue related. I'm going to show you how to make these tasty little barbecue squash sliders, some corn salad. Oh, just look at all these yummy things we got going on here. You know, the best thing is, this is all going to be Gerson therapy approved. It's not your traditional barbecue, but it's still barbecue. All right, let's get to cooking. As usual, I have all the ingredients laid out on my tabletop here. Now it does look alike a lot, but you know, we are making quite a few little dishes and we're making a barbecue sauce, which is like, how awesome is that? We're going to make a Gerson Therapy approved barbecue sauce, which it takes a lot of little ingredients to get there, but I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so let's uh, work on that barbecue sauce base. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna call this the barbecue sauce base, which we're gonna cut up a few ingredients here, put it into the oven to roast for about an hour and then run through the food mill. It's the base because um, we will wanna do some re additional reduction and some flavor fine tuning once this is done. But you know, I found these uh, plump organic uh, aromas at the market, which I went ahead and picked up because you know they are the best for making sauce, but you can really use any kind of tomato that you have and that you enjoy the flavor of, just make sure it is organic. And then we're gonna do a rough chop here on about a quarter of an onion and throw in a bit of garlic. I went with two little garlics. Uh, and then uh, we do want to add in a sweet element because, you know, of course, with barbecue sauce, you do kind of have that sweet taste to it. For that, I uh, went with dried fruit. So I use these organic dried plums. Uh, you know, this brand, it's really nice. It's just um, dried fruit, nothing extra added to it. And then I also have an organic date that I'm gonna chop up and put in there as well. And again, you don't need to worry too much about the size. You wanna cut it up a little bit because we will, like I said, run everything through the, through the food mill. We also wanna put in some spice to spice up that barbecue sauce. Uh, for that, we're gonna do a little bit of coriander and some turmeric. Of course, those are also on the Gerson Therapy Spice Approved list. And then, you know, I like um, also adding in extra onion and garlic powder. I know I have the fresh garlic and onion in there, but you know that um, powder, it just has a very distinct flavor profile. Mixing them together is fabulous. And then um, a little bit more sweet element for our barbecue sauce, and that's just going to be half a teaspoon of maple syrup. And then we need that tanginess. That tangy is going to come from apple cider vinegar. Um, you can use other vinegars, but I just recommend sticking with that apple cider vinegar. All right, we're going to give everything a mix, get it covered up, and get ready to stick that in the oven. Uh, we're going to bake our barbecue sauce and our spaghetti squash at the same time. I love spaghetti squash. It has such a mild taste to it, and you know, it really pairs with almost anything. Uh, so for uh, preparing our spaghetti squash, it's pretty easy. We're just going to cut that guy right down the middle. Uh, I found over the years it's the safest to go down the middle, plus it cooks the most evenly. And then we're going to scoop out those inyards. Uh, I like to use a melon baller. The melon baller, I think, just uh, makes it a little bit easier a process. But if you don't have it, you know, a spoon works just perfect. All right, and then as always, we're just going to go ahead and toss those innards away, you know, compost or trash. And you know, that's pretty much it, guys. Those spaghetti squash is ready to bake. We're gonna put that on a cookie tray, uh, meat side down so that any of the extra moisture will drip out. We do want the spaghetti squash to be um, a little bit more on the dry side. All right, so let's put that in the oven with our barbecue sauce. We're gonna bake that at 365 for an hour. While those are baking, let's get to cooking on our corn salad. Oh, I just love the summertime. It is really like the only time you can find fresh organic corn. Uh, and you know, on the Gerson therapy, corn is going to be a treat because uh, that is a grain and it is not a vegetable. So it does need to be eaten in moderation, uh, only maximum once a week. And since it's such a treat, you know, we don't want to overpower that corn. We do want to enjoy the sweetness and the freshness it brings. So for dressing, we're going to do just a little bit of lemon juice with some flax oil. And then to accompany that sweet corn, we're going to add in some onion. I go with uh, red. That's my go-to salad onion. And then a little bit of pepperiness. We'll put in some of their green bell pepper. If you don't have green, which you should since we have it for our juices, you can use any other bell pepper. And um, of course, I love garlic in almost everything, so I'm going to put some garlic in there. 
And then, oh my gosh, I found these gorgeous little cherry tomatoes at the farmer's market. That's another fun, that's another favorite part of uh, summertime is finding these uh, sweet cherry tomatoes. Oops, I think I forgot to mention, we do want to boil that corn for 15 minutes and then take it out and chill it before we cut it into our salad. We're also going to put in some herbs. I went with fresh cilantro just because I love the taste of cilantro. And then, uh, you know, while I'm in that kitchen cooking, I'm also making my eggplant salad for the week so I have an easy dinner. Uh, I will put the link down in my description if you want to see how to make my roasted eggplant salad. It is one of my go-tos. Okay, so now the corn has chilled and we're going to just cut those little kernels right off the corn on the cob and so we can add it into our salad. Now that the corn is chopped off, we're just gonna break it up a little bit here so it's easier to add into our salad, but let's take a look at everything we have here. We have our fresh little cherry tomatoes, our sweet corn, cilantro, garlic, onions, some green bell peppers, and for that dressing, like I said, we're gonna keep it simple. Just two tablespoons of lemon juice, a tablespoon of flax oil, and that is all we're gonna put in there. You know, honestly, if you could package summer up and put it in a bowl, this is totally it. All right, guys, I know it is like so tempting to just munch on this entire salad while we're making the rest of dinner, but we do want to enjoy it with our barbecue sliders. So let's put it in a small dish, move it on over to the fridge, and let's get to working on our slaw. For that, of course, we're going to want some form of cabbage. Uh, my preference is a uh, green cabbage. I went with half a head of cabbage and that is going to give me quite a bit of extra slaw so uh, I'll have it to enjoy on the sliders and then as a side dish uh, for a few other days. You chop your slaw up and then a few other ingredients we're going to add in there is some um, garlic and onion and then I like to go with actually red bell pepper. I like the sweetness and the pepperiness from the bell pepper versus adding carrot but if you like carrot go ahead and put a little bit more in there. And then for dressing, we're gonna use uh, some of that lemon that we had juiced earlier for our corn salad, uh, and also um, a little bit of apple cider. So it's kind of a mix between the two, lemon and apple cider, and a little bit of flax oil. And then we're gonna put in some non-fat organic uh, yogurt. I had uh, Greek yogurt on hand, uh, but you can use the plain yogurt. Just of course, make sure it's organic and non-fat. And that is all we need for our slaw. We're gonna let that chill in the refrigerator so that all the flavors come together. With the salads resting in the refrigerator and the other items baking, let's get to working on our slider buns. How are we going to do that? Well, of course, we're going to use potatoes because we want to have a potato with our lunches and our dinners. So I've gotten pretty creative on how to transform those potatoes into tasty other items. Okay, so for our potato sliders, we're going to use two large russet potatoes, peel those and uh, easy to prep all these items because we're going to use the uh, grater, right? So we grated up some onion. I went with half an onion and now we're going to grate up those potatoes. And you know, I have a secret ingredient here that um, I added in to give it a little extra oomph. Now this is gonna take um, a few more minutes to get this item prepped. I think you can uh, forego it if you are unable to do it, but if you have time, let's make it. And that is non-fat mozzarella cheese. Yep, that's correct. You heard me right. I did say non-fat organic mozzarella cheese, and yes, we can have it on the Gerson therapy. Uh, you know, it's gonna take about 15 minutes to put together, so it's not too much time. You'll need uh, non-fat organic milk and a little bit of distilled vinegar. And then you start to get this cheesy goodness right here. And then of course, we'll continue to heat it up to make that stretch, stretchy mozzarella. I do have a detailed video on step-by-step -step on how to make this cheese. I'll go ahead and link here if you do have the time and you'd like to add it, I totally recommend it. If not, uh, like I did say, this is my secret ingredient and we can uh, substitute the cheese with some uh, non-fat organic uh, yogurt. But I did want that 
chewy crispiness you're going to get from uh, using the mozzarella cheese. Okay, so now that we have all our ingredients grinded up, let's go ahead and start combining everything. Our two binding agents for uh, these sliders is going to be some tapioca and our oat flour, which of course the oat flour we've grinded ourselves at home. Okay, so let's go ahead and get all this combined. We'll put in our potatoes, our onions, our cheese, our tapioca, and our oat flour, and then um, we'll need to add in some water. Like I did say, if you're using the uh, yogurt in substitute of the cheese, you might not need too much water, and I do kind of add these slowly so that I don't overwater it. It's always easier to add extra water versus trying to take it away. And for the spicing element, I'm gonna put in a good helping of uh, garlic powder. Okay, so let's get that water in and let's get to mixing so we have a gooey consistency. Oops, I forgot to mention, I did wanna put in some apple cider vinegar. You know, on the Gerson therapy, we are on a salt-free diet, so vinegar does help to add that salty taste. I went with one cap, but if I went back and changed anything, I would actually do three to four caps. And then um, just to finish up this uh, mixing, we do wanna add in enough water so you get that nice sticky gooey consistency so everything sticks together. Uh, before we start cooking these slider buns, let's look at our barbecue sauce and see how that is going. Everything is cooking down perfect. We're gonna leave the lid off now to cook out a little bit of the liquid. Moving back to our potato slider buns, uh, you know, originally when I started to think about this recipe, I was going to cook all of them on the stainless steel skillet. But you know, uh, the more I started thinking about it, that just really wasn't practical because each batch here is going to take about 20 to 30 minutes. So I decided let's give it a whirl and see how they turn out in the oven. Now, you know, frankly, I could not taste the difference between the oven and the skillet bun. So it, when I do repeat this recipe, I will actually just do all in the oven at the same time versus trying to bother with the skillet. This recipe I had is going to make six little potato slider buns. So I would uh, form little patties on some parchment paper, all six of them at the same time, and put them in the oven, cooking them at uh, 385. If you don't wanna go at that high, I would recommend something between 350 to 385. Uh, cook on one side for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then the most challenging part of uh, making these little buns is actually peeling them off of the parchment paper for that initial turn. You do wanna make sure that they have cooked through because if they don't, they will get really sticky. So make sure they're cooked perfectly. If they're not peeling away at all, just put them in for another five, another, you know, two to three minutes or so, but not more than five. Once you have them flipped, um, you don't actually need that parchment paper anymore. So you can cook them on the cookie tray or like I have here, my little stainless steel tray in my Breville, uh, whichever you have, uh, that will work. So you only need the parchment paper for that initial cook. Um, so I have six of them, as I said, I have those two I put on the skillet and then four that I'm going to do here in the oven. And that is it on these little buns. They are crispy and soft at the same time. Yummy yum. Okay, well, here's a quick little glimpse of that finished eggplant salad I mentioned earlier. The link is down in the description if you're interested. Now we need to fine tune and finish that barbecue sauce. Uh, to do that, after taking it out of the oven, we're going to run it through our food mill. Uh, the grade I used on the food mill is the thinnest one possible uh, because it is a sauce you do want to try to go with the thinnest setting. Now a barbecue as we all know is a little bit on the thicker side so to turn this sauce into that uh, thicker sauce we're going to add in half a teaspoon of tapioca starch and uh, once we get that uh, tapioca starch incorporated we want to add a few more ingredients and that is going to be molasses you know molasses is going to help give it that deep rich color and that um, rich flavor and taste that you normally get with a barbecue sauce uh, not too much though because we don't want to overpower this with sweets because we already do have the plum and the dates in there so about a half a teaspoon and then for some more bold flavor we're going to put in some balsamic vinegar uh, you know, once I did that, I kind of gave it a taste and I was saying, oh, it still needs a little bit more of a tanginess to it. So to add back 
to add in more tanginess, I'm gonna put in some more apple cider vinegar. We'll give all this a good mix, and then we need to transfer it over to a saucepan because we do wanna cook this sauce down a little bit more so that it becomes thicker, and um, with that tapioca flour in there, heating it up is certainly going to do the trick. We're going to let the barbecue sauce simmer down for about 10 to 15 minutes, and in the meantime, let's look at that spaghetti squash. Uh, it is perfect and like I said super easy cut it in half put it on a baking sheet cook it bake it for an hour that is it uh, for tonight's dinner I'm only going to peel uh, half of this spaghetti squash out I'm gonna save the other one for uh, a different meal later in the week the barbecue sauce is just about done here it's thickened up nice and neat I think it's time to turn it turn the heat off and move it into a glass dish and let it cool before mixing into our spaghetti squash all right one more look at our uh, potato buns oh don't those look gorgeous they were yummy yum okay here is everything we are ready to plate up dinner that crunchy fresh sweet corn salad honestly i think it was the best part about all of dinner the crunchy slaw that we're gonna pile on top of that barbecue squash our squash before we've mixed in our barbecue sauce and our gerson therapy sweet and tangy barbecue and of course one more last look at those potato buns all right I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if you like it and like to see more uh, videos in the future. Uh, this is again a perfect meal to enjoy for the summertime, for 4th of July, any little fam family picnic you have, you can make it beforehand and bring your Gerson therapy meal and it will work out perfect. All right guys, thank you again for watching. Happy healing, happy eating. Till the next time, bye-bye.